What's up guys, it's Stefan Whitaker back for another interview segment, uh, interviewing you, interviewing me. And today we have a very special guest. He's visiting all the way from Austin, Texas. He is uh, a descendant of Fort Wayne though, of course. <laughs> um, but he's moved on to better things. <laughs> so I wanna um, introduce him. Uh, he's a, a great friend of mine, a great collaborator, um, another amazing filmmaker here, here from Fort Wayne and now doing things in Austin, Texas. Um, the one and only, Mr. Taylor Fredericks. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Bro. Oh, yes, yeah. all the time, man. You already know, like I said, I, I definitely had to get you on here for the interview segment while, while you're here yeah, in dude, Fort it's Wayne cool. and whatnot. Oh, yeah. um, how you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I mean, Fort Wayne's been pretty gloomy and rainy, which I don't mind yeah. because Texas is pretty much overall sunny uh, hot a lot of the time but i don't mind the heat i don't yeah. mind the heat especially Probably when feels like hell right now down there <laughs> it, it i mean like well the thing is like up here like with the rain it just makes it super muggy yeah down there it's oh, pretty man. dry so it's like eh. yeah I, mean, I guess to have two different little polar opposites every now yeah and then, you know, might as well spend a week in the gloomy <laughs> shitty weather at least just a week <laughs> Um, but yes, Taylor Fredericks um, is finally here, so we're going to go ahead and get on this interview. I got like, I think, 11 or 12 questions, um, so let's get started. All right, what you thinking? So, all right, for the first thing, well, of course, tell us tell us who you are once again and what you do. Um, what is like your, I guess, your main career, main occupation? Um, I'm Taylor Fredericks. Uh, I'm an aspiring filmmaker, um, uh, the founder and creator of Static Heart Productions, along with my producing partner, Adam King. Um, dope, dope. Yeah, and I like to shoot films and music videos every now and then. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do. And then little photo shoot, you know, photo stuff on the side. Yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing the photography. Photography's looking good. I saw hey, the thanks, the, the, bright, bright, the photo with Bryce with the Star Wars. Yeah. That, that's dope. That, that yeah, is a we dope just shot that the other day, man. That's, 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 that's a dope fun. That ass fun. picture. That's really dope. All right, so cool. So um, I guess the next question is how, how did you become a filmmaker? What, like... Like you're, you're, cause you're like you've been doing this for a while now. Um, mm -hmm. What is what? How did you actually get started with like, like started actually like making movies and actually decide to make this like a aspiring career for you? Um, well, I started off as a musician um, when I was nine years old. I got my first acoustic guitar on my ninth birthday, actually, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to become a rock star, I guess, cause I was following in my dad's footsteps, you know, cause he was a musician as well. Mm -hmm. And after around age 12, I started booking my own shows, I was, coffee shop shows at age 12. It would yeah. be like four different, five coffee shops each month here in mm -hmm. Fort Wayne. When there was, all like I don't think any of them are actually open anymore. But uh, yeah, so then I finally got to the point to where after high school, once I got into, got into it with high school, and I ended up actually getting... Uh, more into like the the film and TV mm -hmm. aspect of that class. I just fell in love with it, and I was yeah. like, man, this would be like a backup plan if music, if music falls through for me. Mm -hmm. And I felt I got to the point to where music, I just felt like I was just burnt out on mm -hmm. it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take the next step forward with filmmaking. And so then I just kept making films and kept, I went to IPFW for a couple years, mm -hmm. dropped out of that because I didn't feel like I was really learning too much that I didn't right. already know. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to get more hands-on stuff, so that's when I, you know, met up with Austin, Austin Sarver and Adam Nelson. And shout out to the boys. Yeah, the, boy, the fine cinema. Yeah, that's the crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, ended up actually getting with them, learned so much from them, and then just from there it just became this nice collaboration. And then we ended up getting Bryce into mm -hmm. it, Ryan into it, you yeah. into it, and just yeah. like everybody into Building it. Building up a family of Yeah, uh, dude, this, this sure. film family. And so it's just like, and I realized that even though I do enjoy playing music from time to time, mm -hmm. filmmaking is definitely my biggest passion. 100%, that's awesome. Okay, so what kind of films have inspired you to actually want and like create like your own movies? Like what specific films? Of course, you you know you premiered your film and did a moment, an yeah. amazing film <laughs> on uh, last Saturday. Um, I mean, what 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 are some of the different like film like the I would say name at least five films that have inspired you the most and inspired me the most. Yeah. Um, one of my biggest, one of my favorite films um, of all time and actually inspired me to create Static Car Productions was the mm -hmm. film You're Next. By oh, right. oh, yeah. I think yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was the one thing I was, yeah. after watching that movie, I was like, Full you know Full sale what? alumni, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then after that, I was like, man, like, I want to do this. I want to mm -hmm. do this. And because, I mean, and then after that, I just became into this, like, Adam Wingard, mm -hmm. Simon Barrett, like, wormhole yeah. and just, like, embrace myself into right, all their yeah. films. 
Um, but other than that, I love The Shining. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Amazing. Blue Valentine is easily one of my favorite films of all mm -hmm. time, which inspired Anna in a Moment. Yep. Same with Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many good movies, man. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you, you like a lot of movies that... Would you say that you like a lot of movies that are more like... Maybe more... It, it makes the audience think a little bit more. As yeah, far as I'm, deeper I, into I, the I love, feelings and I love emotions. Psycho, I love something with a psychological element to mm -hmm. it. Like, Absolutely. whether it be horror, whether it be romance, like, there's always, I love the way the mind works, mm -hmm. and, uh, that, like, I, I failed psychology, well, I didn't, I got a D <laughs> in psychology when I went to IPFW, yeah. but, like, I actually, instead of, like, alright, forcing myself to learn this, it's like, alright, let me put it into something that I love to do when it comes to writing psychology, psycho so the psychological element mm -hmm. in films, yeah. and I was like, man, this is what I enjoy. I enjoy looking at the way the mind works and, mm -hmm. you know, the cognitive aspect of it, and, yeah. like, I just, I love everything about it, so I just wanted to, I don't know, I'd really connect with those films. I don't, right. I mean, there's a lot of great films that are mm -hmm. like, hey, you know, this is what's going on, let me shove it down your throat so you understand right. what's yeah. going on, but I love... I absolutely love yeah. films that I'm, I can sit there after I get mm -hmm. it done watching it and, and think be like, more on it. Like, and you know like, yeah, exactly, and like, wait yeah. a second, how did you know? Yeah. Let me piece all this together. For I love that. Yeah, man. I absolutely. love that. Man. I would say yeah, because like for me, I, I'm definitely a big fan of movies like that too. I think the most uh, I, there, there's like a couple there's like a couple films that I like sit back and still have to think about today, like. To me, Inception is one of those movies. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I feel like dude, I still don't understand. Dude, Inception, yeah, for sure. That's, That's crazy. one of my favorites as well. Um, I really, my favorite, and it's probably, it's probably, because a lot of people, a lot of people's favorite from Nolan is probably, probably either Inception or like, um, what's that first one that he did? Um, Memento. Memento. Memento was so Of course, good. a lot of people like Dark Knight, or but I think Interstellar is one of those films, too, that made me think about a lot of stuff, too, yeah. as far as like. Uh, you know stuff within space and just some of the stuff that was going on. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a very it's a very intelligent film, right? Um, and yeah, dude, I think a lot of his films are yeah, are like very that. intelligent, exactly, like, and very intelligent, very ambitious. I mean, that's yeah, just going, man. you know what I mean? But I, I mean, just there's definitely the most recent movie that's made, that made me think about a lot of stuff was honestly Hereditary. Had had, dude, had yeah, uh, there's a lot of there's a there's a, a lot of stuff about it that was like damn. Like I think I have to think about my own like her, Hereditary stuff in my family, and it's like damn. Like does this really follow like a like a like a you know a pattern? You know right. What I mean? Like damn, that's kind of scary, but yeah, dude, and that, and that was the thing about that, and mm -hmm. like I definitely need to go check it out. I need to check it out a second time for mm -hmm. sure. But um, after talking with a lot of people and getting their perspectives on it, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I really need to see this again yeah. because I know there's a lot that I missed out on yeah. the first time seeing it, mm -hmm. and I'm just, I know there's a lot of things that it's very up for your own interpretation. Right. With a lot of it, exactly. And I mean, A24 just knocks out the park. Uh, they're the just time, they're man. just constantly killing it, dude. Yeah. And like all the time, blowing up. Yeah, for it's real. Amazing. That's awesome. All right. Uh, next question. So, tell us more about Static Heart Production. Like, where, where, first of all, where did the name come from, and like, where, what was? I mean, of course, you you said the the film that inspired you to actually get that started. Uh, but delve into that a little bit more. Where did the name come from with Static Heart Production? Um, I have a, I, I don't know what it is, but I have a, I'm a big fan of hearts. If you haven't mm -hmm. seen all my heart tattoos, yeah, yeah. even the word heart is on my chest. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just have a thing for that, like mm -hmm. the human heart, like life. Like, yeah. what, you know, what keeps us going, what, you know, there's so much that you can put with that. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like with Static Heart, at first it was more of like, okay, relating into a videography, static, and mm -hmm. bringing life to dead air, dead noise. Yeah, yeah. But I feel yeah, like there's like just that. a lot more, a lot more to it mm -hmm. now, you know, and actually diving into it more. It's just mm -hmm. more, I don't know, it's just more of a... I feel like it's because it's like my my the passion the mm -hmm. passion is there right. and so it's just like it keeps me going it keeps it keeps me alive it keeps me right, yeah. it makes me feel alive so that mm -hmm. so just I don't know it's just something that I really connected with instantly mm -hmm. and Absolutely. just went with it I like that that's dope I mean because yeah Static Heart Production is such a is such a very interesting name to me like of course, I, I just went generic and just said SW Films. <laughs> you know what I, mean? hey, I it didn't works, really know. It worked. Yeah, like I didn't really know, like, 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 I guess a better name to call it. But then I think about it, at least when I think about SW Films, I think of, oh, SW Films, I, I, obviously Stefan Whitaker Films, but like, I guess. It's gonna sound crazy, but like I guess when you look deeper into who Stefan Whitaker is, then I guess you'll understand. Look at a certain prot, like the. The the uh, the actual films or products that I've done, then people understand. Right. But, okay. So you said that you're next inspired to actually start, like actually start the production company, or 
right? You said right. that your next was the was the main inspiration to actually start. Like you wanted to start actually having um, like that as a business then. Yeah, like well, I just uh, it came down to um, start started out with music videos, mm -hmm. you know, and then I started getting right, into yeah. more like the really short films like Trapped and Desolate, mm -hmm. the three minute long yeah. films, um, and then it just now it's just like all right making more films and music videos putting right, more yeah. effort more um time with making a film mm -hmm. and like with the music video that i'm doing uh for my buddy chris mm -hmm. on sunday um we're really taking a concept like i love i love conceptual music videos because yeah, it's like right. i'm creating my own short film with yeah. and, and you know I and know. It's, it's just, it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Like, have you seen Donald Glover's This Is America? Oh, yeah, dude. It's so oh, good. Love it's it. so good. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a legend. <laughs> he's an icon, but yeah, go ahead. But yeah, man. Like, it's just like, and like, I just love, I love writing. I love creating. Mm -hmm. I love coming up with ideas and creating some substance and really thinking about it. Like, okay, mm -hmm. well, if we shoot it this way and just like, like, really, like cinematography. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah. Like, I just, I love really diving into that mm -hmm. and really thinking about it and really conceptualizing everything yeah absolutely definitely so, i mean so so adam king uh who's another good friend of mm -hmm. ours and he worked he's a part of static car production yes. so like how did he actually like did you guys you came up with it like you came up with the whole set of car production yeah first and mm -hmm. then like he came in um he came in like pretty recently right or, uh yeah he uh he was actually a part of multiple hats production which is um ran and operated by our buddy uh tommy martin well, and, shout out uh, to Tom Anderson. Yeah, him yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He actually came down to Austin for a little bit really? but this past November and hung oh, out. Oh, nice, that's dope. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, he was with Multiple Hats for a little while, and then the first project that we worked on together was mm -hmm. Dowdy Row, mm -hmm. and I was uh, I was the DP for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Adam was the writer, director, star of it. Mm -hmm. And once we worked on a, a weekend or two of that, I was like, man, I was like, I work really well with this. Like we have very similar producing styles very mm -hmm. similar directing techniques yeah and it just and he's one of the best screenwriters that i know yeah and i was like man and then you know he ended up it just some stuff kind of fell through with mm -hmm. him in multiple hats um and i just asked him i was like hey man do you want to it's just me on static heart do you want to be a part of static mm -hmm. heart and just be a part of this big collaboration that we got going with undefined cinema mm -hmm. you know with frizzle media mm -hmm. and he's like dude i'm down i'm mm -hmm. down and yeah. uh so this after yeah, and so then I think the first project that we actually worked on together, we worked on Anna in a moment, but mm -hmm. the and but other than that, the only like project that we worked on, mm -hmm. which I think that might have shut off. I think so, yeah. I just you can say going. And uh, so, so yeah, so I think the most I think a lot of it mm -hmm. actually came from rentals, and then Anna in a moment, and then now he's got this new film that he's shooting next month. Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna be really, really cool. I wish I could actually be on set for it, but yeah. I don't have the money to fly back in a few weeks. Right. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> well, uh, such time in a day. But yeah, other than that, man, yeah. like, it's it's great. Uh, I'm I'm glad that he's a part of this because we like to we really collaborate well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, going through scripts and just kind of right. bouncing ideas off each other, and it's just right, it's yeah. just it works. Right. That's awesome. I mean, how 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 do you guys? How does the collaboration for you guys still come together now that like you moved to Austin, Texas, and he's here in Fort Wayne? Like, how do how do how do you guys like I guess communicate for certain projects now? Um, still communicate the same as what we normally do. Um, it really comes down to it really comes down to like just emailing back and forth, texting each other back and forth. Of course, yeah, we don't have no social media at yeah, all. Yeah, right? he doesn't. He's he's like he's, he's like, really, come on, it's like taboo to him. <laughs> But uh, yeah. it's all good. Um, yeah. I mean, he's been super. I mean, like he's super busy with his job and his yeah. family and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but like, it was really great to reconnect with everybody this past weekend. Oh yeah, there. absolutely. Like it was just such a. It, it definitely. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a heart filling experience. Oh yeah. For and sure. um, so yeah, we still we still communicate back and forth. Like I ended up like even I pitched in my ideas for this feature that I'm writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we even talked. We talked about it through email. We've been talking more. We talked more about it after when we went out to eat after the premiere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, we just we still communicate on everything. And that's awesome. Yeah, it's that's good. communication is definitely there. That's good. I mean, yeah, because sometimes that can be hard, you know, with with with, with that like with with so much distance, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And of course, like you're busy, you know, doing your stuff in Austin, Texas, and he's busy, you know, teaching and everything down mm -hmm. here. So. It's good that you guys still have that kind of communication and whatnot, um, and build off that. Okay, Definitely. so um, more like because I really like the I like the I like how you 
how you summed up what Static Heart Productions means to you, like the Static Heart and everything. Mm -hmm. um, like what you said, like bring, basically bringing life to like the dead air. Like I really like that specific uh, that, that definition. So, mm -hmm. would you say that a lot of your um, would you say that a lot of like your personal projects and scripts? Do you put a lot of your personal emotion and, and like experiences in them? Would you say? Oh yeah, um, pretty much like. For example, and in a moment mm -hmm. was literally in uh, my own representation of myself, mm -hmm. like who I used to be, and right. like and I and like um, I after this move and everything, and mm -hmm. it really helped me um, w even with and in a moment filming that it really helped me define who I really was as a person, yeah. and really helped better myself as a person, mm -hmm. and uh, going through some own, my own in inner struggles and stuff like that, and really mm -hmm. getting getting to finding true happiness and not right. letting things get to me. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm just, I really think uh, set a card is definitely a, a nice gateway, a nice Absolutely. nice way to cope through everything. And, Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, so I, yeah. Definitely, because I mean, I, I would say, and I think a lot of filmmakers use it like that, like, um, you know, for me, like, when I made, so I only have one short film, but How the Hurt Caught the Dove, Definitely, if people have watched it or seen it, definitely, I would not gonna say that it's, it's on that like it's a personal experience I've gone through. But it was mainly just a lot of because like uh, how the hook of the dove is about um, a sex offender who moves back into his neighborhood and stuff, and that's yeah, to try and to, it's like, a really good film. Right, thank you, man, thank you. And mm -hmm. like that for me, it was like I had watched a lot of stuff, and I was just and I mainly mainly that film came together just through a lot of thought. I was like, huh, how would somebody in that specific situation? Um, like how would that person ha what would he have to do to, to traverse back into this regular right. world you know especially when it's something that is totally wrong right. it's like how would they try to get back to like this normal you kind of you kind of took you took your like a different perspective right you exactly know, someone you know else's what I mean? perspective exactly and the film that, that I'm writing now that I haven't spoken too much about I've told you about it but like that film I think is once again more on like personal like thoughts and, and just different I, different things I've thought about but Maybe a little bit of personal experience um, in certain, in specific, um, in specific, like I guess scenes or places or mm -hmm. characters. You right. know what I mean? Because I think right now, like I haven't, so I've done a lot of music videos and like commercials and stuff, but like obviously I can't put my personal experiences into someone else's project. You know what I mean? Right. It's usually their stuff. Right. You know, um, I can add to it. Obviously, like usually mm -hmm. when I do music videos, I usually like make the concept for the artist. Yeah. They'll, they'll let me know what the song. What the song is about, and then I'm like, okay, well, this is what I think it should be. What should be done visually, you know, that kind of right, thing. Right, exactly. Um, but like, for some of those certain projects that I'm like writing treatments for or having like concepts for, mm -hmm. is usually uh, you're like on um, personal experience or just right. different emotion. Like one project, and you remember, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying not to like push it out there to where it's like, you know, where I explain it. But remember <laughs> the one project that you came down to Angola for. Remember. It was the, you came down there, it was the one time you came to Angola, you met Enigma. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, that yeah. specific project. Right, right, that right. That project that I'm working on, <laughs> that product is definitely a project where it's a lot of personal, because I mean, the, the, the whole, that whole project is basically based on me and my thoughts right. and, and stuff like that. And like that, um, I mean, I think just for filmmakers like us, like, of course we're going to put a lot of personal emotion, personal experiences exactly, in our project, yeah. because that... Like you said, Anna Moment was like your, is your baby, you yeah. know what I mean? And like obviously it's your baby because it, it really, like you said, it's about you and who you used to be. And mm -hmm. now having it out there and like and all that kind of stuff, it shows you like who you really are, what right. you want to be, that kind of thing. Right. So I think that's definitely important to have um, as a filmmaker, you know what I mean? As an artist. Exactly. Think, so no, I, I totally agree with and that. I think, and, would you, and would you say like having a lot of your personal experiences and emotion put into like a piece of art that you create, would you say that kind of started from like being a musician? Would you say that? Um, yeah, I guess I guess it would uh, relate to songwriting. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you know that too. Mm -hmm. um, just it's just like when you go through those own experiences, that like mm -hmm. music was my way of coping right, with yeah. different struggles, different things. You know, yeah, for sure. My grandfather's death and mm -hmm. my friend's deaths and stuff like that. Just very, very personal stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it was my way to cope with something, and that was the one thing that really got me through a lot of things but then right. I got to, like I said I got to the point where I felt burnt out where I didn't yeah. even feel like it was even it was helping me cope anymore and yeah. so I just became this this kind of miserable wreck mm -hmm. until you know I really dove into filmmaking and uh, awesome. yeah. found a different way to cope with a lot of the stuff that uh, you know and that's and that's and that's another question that that comes up into my mind too now like because I have I think I spoke about it when I was speaking to Enigma when I was doing his interview and it, like would you say that 
doing creating your films would you say that's a therapeutic thing for you do you feel does it feel therapeutic oh yeah way? i mean like there's it's, it's a it can be a pain in the ass sometimes yeah. <laughs> it, can be a, it can be very yeah. <laughs> very tough sometimes but yeah. like but yeah definitely i love it um I mean, it's fun. I mean, it, it's definitely a lot of hard work. You Absolutely. know that, and uh, it's yeah. just—it's definitely like I would say therapeutic for sure. Because yeah. it just—it just helps you get those raw emotions out. It helps you mm -hmm. create something. You know, yeah. it helps you use your mind. It helps you take focus off everything else yeah. and just 100%. completely be a part of that. I agree. I agree. I agree mostly on that because, like, I feel like for me, like when I did How the Hurt Called the Dove, like it—it—it it, it didn't really feel therapeutic to me. It felt. It felt. I felt like I was so in the moment of you know having to to be a leader and be a director and just mm -hmm. I was just focused on the pro, the the production right. and like focusing stuff on the story, so like I didn't it didn't feel therapeutic until it was out there, which right. it still hasn't really been out there because not a lot of people have seen it um, and stuff. I still I'm still making them DVDs too, like, by the way. I've, I've been right now making the covers. I forgot for those. that I forgot I burned you some yeah. of those DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the guy who got the disc for me, so yeah. I got to get the damn DVD covers <laughs> done. But um, I, yeah, I would say like it is therapeutic. But I think for me, I think it's more therapeutic, I guess, on like, it doesn't feel therapeutic to me during the process of it. I, I feel like, I, I, I feel like it's not the process that makes it feel therapeutic. I feel like it's the finished product that makes it feel, for me, therapeutic. Because I feel like when you're, when I'm working, when I'm working on a piece of art, like, I de it definitely takes stress away. But, it, but at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, like, all right, I just need to focus on, on crafting this the best way that I can, mm -hmm. you know, and then when the, when the finished product is out there, it's like, all right, am I, am, do I feel proud about this? Am I happy about this? Like, how, you know, what's, do other people feel proud about it? Do other people like it? Well, right. You know, that kind of thing. Um, I just think more on the conceptual side, it feels like more therapeutic. You know no, what I mean? And I totally agree with you. And I kind of mm -hmm. like, and even though like during production, I mean, in a moment and all those long, you know, those few months of shooting that, yeah, it was definitely, um, therapeutic then. And I agree mm -hmm. with the, with the end product too, because yeah. I remember, just a week or two ago, I watched the final version of the film. Yeah. And I literally, I yeah. just sat in my room, man. It yeah. was just dark in my room. I just watched it, sitting in front of my yeah. computer screen, and I watched it. And dude, after, man, I was just like, yeah, I had like, just wow, these this... tears in my eyes, dude. Right. Like, I was just like, man, this is finished. Right, exactly. Like, like it's finally here. Finally. I would done. even say, like, in the development process, like, the script that I'm writing, like, like I said, I was reading it yesterday. And like I hadn't read it in a long time, and like yesterday I felt yes, you know, because I was I had like a little bit of a little bit of a down weekend last weekend, but like reading it yesterday and just reading kind of the stuff that I wrote, and then reading some of the specific like just envisioning some of the scenes in my head, like it, it made me feel happy, like it made me feel rejuvenated in a way, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I was like, damn, this is the script's not done, it's not even final yet, but it's like, man, it feels good to see like it feels good to see the progress that I had, you know, that I have right now that, right. of the script and, and everything. So I would say it's therapeutic for me. It's therapeutic in the beginning and some at the end and then a little bit in, in between yeah. and then like during the actual process, I guess it just, I guess, you know, I guess as filmmakers, it's for, for, for most filmmakers and creators, sometimes they we're, we're too, we, we put too much pressure on ourselves to actually like to get specific there, most things right, you know what I right. mean? Like to, to pull off specific things. But, yeah. you know, filmmaking is really all about problem solving and, mm. and collaboration, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? So like doing all doing all that kind of stuff, like figuring out, oh, does this shot work or how will the lighting work here? Or what kind of decision would a character make in this specific, right. uh, in this specific environment? You know, it's like stuff you all have to think about as a filmmaker, oh, yeah. which is why I love film is like, you know, it's challenging. It's challenging. You yeah. know what I mean? And I honestly feel like I'm not like a huge problem solver when it comes to some shit, but it's like with this specific kind of art and craft, it's like, man, it's like, um, it's like, I, I feel like, you know, as a filmmaker, I feel like I could, I could solve, you know, more shit that I could really do in real life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, that sounds weird. It, 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 no, that because, sense. because it just, it, you know? it, 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 um, it, it makes you think. Yeah. It makes it's that, that problem solving. Exactly. You know, and then you can bring that easily into the real world. Mm -hmm. You know, especially exactly. if, especially depending on the script. You know, especially yeah. how real if you if the script is it's real very, enough yeah. and very it's real realism. Just, yeah. You know, exactly. And yeah, you can absolutely. And it's definitely brought me. <clears throat> I just remember the word that that like a lot of like teachers. <laughs> Cast that going crazy. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of there was like certain like teachers and stuff on set during when I was in full sale and they talked about sense of having a sense of urgency and it was like mm -hmm. I feel like having a sense of urgency is something that I've brought into my life like just from working on like working on different films and everything so like definitely I mean filmmaking is just is it, it's definitely a great passion to have you know yeah. what I mean oh, yeah. um, as far as music though I mean would would you ever like event like like 
take your like, like go down that path again to like be like an actual artist in music too, or, um, or more just this kind of like it's kind of moved over to like a side passion in a way or a side um, hobby. I think it's became more of a hobby. I mm -hmm. think with In a Moment, since I did do a lot of the score, yeah. a lot of the music for it, I think that was definitely something that I needed to do because yeah. oh, it was yeah. kind of it was kind of like it was kind of like closure yeah. in a way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's all right. You know I'm doing taking my first passion that I've ever had, you know, that I've had mm -hmm. since I was little and uh, bringing it into this passion that I have now. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just that nice closure. It was that nice, like, unity. Right. And so I really, yeah, it was really, it's it's a hobby now and I'll, I'll do it every now and then. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll always keep my guitar. I love my guitar. Yeah, absolutely. But, And that's yeah. probably therapeutic too sometimes, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Sure. There's sometimes I'll just pick it up and start learning some new stuff or just playing around. But it's never, it's never... At the realm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to start a band. I had something going with some friends and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of been falling off. And, right. and it's just like, <clears> even <throat> to realize, like, you know, because filmmaking is where I need to be at. Yeah. You know, that's what I need to do. So. 100%. All right, cool. All right, so uh, next question. Um, what What is your favorite genre in film? Like, what, are, what, is the, what is the genre you always seem to find yourself, like, going back to the most? Honestly, I haven't had that problem yet. Really? You haven't like I chosen have, a specific one? I, that's I like... haven't like. I mean, like I said, I really like incorporating a psychological element into mm -hmm. like every film I do. Yeah. Even if it's very little. Mm -hmm. But like, I love experimenting. Like, what Rentals was a comedy. Yeah. Did a romantic drama. We've mm -hmm. done dramas. We've done psychological thrillers, mm -hmm. crime thrillers with the realist. Yeah. Like, it's just so many different things. Crime dramas. It's like, it's just, I just love doing different things. I got a feature mm -hmm. in the works. It's like a sci-fi yeah. drama and then, like, a comedy that I've been working mm -hmm. on. So I just love experimenting. Because it's like, you don't want to get too stagnant and too caught up in right. the same in thing. the same kind of, yeah, you know, sure. you, you know, I love venturing into new categories and new genres and mm -hmm. trying out different things and... Because, I mean, it also comes with different camera angles, different setups. and Right, different lighting. Just, you know, and challenging. Yeah. Going back to the... I, like, I want to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, what, what would you consider yours? Like, what, what, are, you, what are you into? Um, you know, I really, I, like, it's funny, because, like, I feel like back when I, when I was younger, right? When I was, like, younger and stuff, because, like, my, I think I've, I've, I'm pretty sure you know this, but my biggest inspiration when it came, comes to, like, film and, and, and just, like, on a conceptual level is Godzilla. Like, yeah. Godzilla I, is I what inspired me. Mm -hmm. And, like, I kind of like movies like that, but then I realized how horrible they were. <laughs> I mean, not horrible. I, I definitely I mean, love all For the all time. Of, for for the, the time, time it, was, it was badass, yeah. but, you know what I mean? Uh, I really like dramas, though. I think drama, to me, is my favorite, like, genre. Because I feel like with drama, like, with a drama film, I think that's when you can have more of a deeper story, in a way. And, and I feel like psychological stuff, I feel like psychologically, it works... Psycholo I would say psychologically, drama works the best with it, at oh, least yeah. in my opinion. So I think, I think like... Uh, realism. You right, exactly. You know what I mean? Realism. And, like, my thing is, is the film that got me really into drama was Jarhead. Like Jarhead, okay. I love that movie. one of my all time favorite movies, man. And like, of course, Roger Deacon shot that. Uh -huh. Shout out to Roger Deacon. <laughs> um, but like that movie, like it had a sense of realism, like you said, because like the movie was about like these guys going to war. They think they're getting ready to go to war, but then they realize like, oh, you guys aren't going to war. And that's like how it is. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's literally how it is for some for some people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, that that's actually like a and that was like a perspective that I had never seen before. You right. Know? Like, oh, like I always thought, oh, if you go to you go to the military, you're going there to to to, to you know to go to war. to go to war. <laughs> you know, but it was like, damn, that's a whole different perspective. And 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 honestly, that's one of the more real perspectives in that in that in that kind of in that world. So. Uh, Jarhead was like the first thing that opened me, up, opened me up to dramas and then I just started watching more and more. Like I'm not really like a huge fan of like comedy as much as I used to be. I've never really been a huge huge fan of comedy. I feel like when I go to comedy, I'm going to go to like a TV show or like a or like a cartoon. Like Family Guy is like one of my all-time favorite things too and like dude, I love Family Guy. Dude, I've been getting really, really big into Rick and Morty. Like yeah, Rick and Morty is so hilarious. Good. Such a great show so too, good. man. Like I like shows like more cartoons and more stuff like that kind of comedy I'm into. Yeah. Um I I just say the last like real good like comedy that I watched that I thought was was cool. I don't know if it was re it wasn't recent. Super Troopers Two was good. Super Troopers Two was really good. Yeah, it was funny as hell. I really enjoyed uh, that. But the due date. Have you seen that with? Uh, oh yeah. Due yeah, date. due date. Yeah, that's I one did. of my. That's one of my favorites. Like I love that. I mean, I loved. Uh, it's uh, pretty much like a Robert remake of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, I never thought it really is basically. <laughs> yeah, but that's one of my favorite comedies. Um, I love horror films. I've been getting. Mm -hmm. I've always been. That's probably my second favorite genre. I've yeah, been into dude. horror films a lot. I feel like. I feel like now, though, in this kind of world that we're in now, I feel like a lot of horror films get played out, though, a lot. Um, 
you know, which which sometimes is disappointing. Uh, but there's been a lot of better horror films now, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a huge fan of action, like action films as much. I do love John Wick. That's probably like one of the oh, better. John that's Wick's probably one of the best action oh, yeah. films. I'm ready for the last, third one, dude. Yeah, it's probably in the in the last like when did the first one come out? 2014, 2016. No, I don't think the first one. Yeah, it's probably close to around 2014. 2014, yeah, like that. And John Wick two, definitely some of the best in the past like five years. I would say. Yeah, it's it's definitely as good. Um. And then I guess other genres like I'm not I don't really look into a whole lot of like romantic stuff. If I do, it's maybe like short films mm -hmm. mainly. I wouldn't say like feature films. I look for that. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends. Certain genres I look in certain different directions. Right. You know what I mean, but drama is definitely my favorite. I would say uh, of genres. Nice. And whatnot. But yeah. for your films that you actually like made and directed and wrote yourself, like what have you, have you found like a specific genre genre that you've done more than once? I guess I guess it would be drama too. Mm -hmm. I mean, like. We did a romantic drama, a crime drama, mm. a drama. Like, yeah, I guess. Right. I mean, I mean the genre is such a vague different word. Different forms of, of, <laughs> drama. of drama. Yeah. For um, sure. I guess I've done that the most. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been. I, I still. I got. I got a couple horror ideas in mind. Oh yeah, I really me too. Want to screen it's, it. it's, it's hard though. I feel like that's a good question. What genre would you find the hardest to create a movie, a story on? Mm. To me, I think horror is hard because like. Like like because everything's been done. Everything's been done. It's like what can you do? Yeah, what can what, you what? do? And there's only been one horror film I believe that's ever been nominated for an Oscar, The Exorcist. So like, yeah. it's like damn. Like what 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 can you do? Well, what, what do you think is the hardest? Well, I mean, I, the hardest? well, like well, and the thing is, going back to that, mm -hmm. I mean, I think I mean Get Out did really yeah, well. Yeah, true. Get Out. Get yeah, out. Get Out was a fresh idea, and and it's funny because not a lot of people have done, and and it's it's. Shout out to Jordan Peele, but like that, that was, you know, it's funny when I first saw the trailer of it, like before, you know, before anybody kind of like understood what it really was, mm -hmm. I kind of thought it was funny. I didn't, I was like, man, I'm not going to see this shit. It looks, it looks a little ridiculous. I thought of it because it's like, damn, <laughs> it's basically saying that having an interracial relationship <laughs> is like a, like a horror film. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Um, so I, I thought, cause I guarantee, like I guarantee that, you know, he, cause you know, he's a funny dude. Like I thought to myself, like, I bet when they were all like, when he was collaborating with whoever to talk about what the script was about, but he's like, Hey, so a black dude and a white girl, they're dating and it becomes like a horror film. Like, you know, I, I feel yeah. like that was kind of like the running joke of it. But then when you like watch the movie and stuff and you kind of understand like this, this systemic racism and stuff that's kind of, of course, just based in real life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And like how uh, that could be turned into like a horror trope is actually really smart. Um, there's another film that's coming out pretty soon that I heard of. I don't know. If I don't know if it has a specific title yet, but it was basically about. It's gonna be about a cop who like who like gunned down like you know some like uh, you know African American children, and then after that he's like haunted by that like haunted by like the kids and stuff or by the family or something like that. Are you talking blind spotting? I, I don't know if that's the name of it. It's a film that's it's not even out yet. I think it's I still like I think it's still like in development or like in pre-production. Okay, right it now. reminds me of uh, it reminds me of blind spotting because in the mm -hmm. trailer. It shows uh, the black dude. Mm -hmm. He's he's like one of the main characters. Yeah. He's in that box truck, yeah. and then he sees the white cop coming, you know, mm -hmm. around yeah. while another guy was, with, right. you know, black dude was running. Right, exactly. And then in the yeah. rearview mirror, that sweet ass shot. Yeah. You know, the rearview mirror, you mm -hmm. see him getting gunned down, yeah, and then the that. look, and they look at each other, the cop, yeah. and the guy, and they're just like they just witnessed him. Right, murder. exactly. Like yeah. it was just like. That movie's gonna be good, oh, yeah. but that's what that's what that reminded me of. But I guess yeah. you know if that's yeah, some kind of like horror, like horror tropes like that. Yeah, like Get Out has such a smart horror trope about it. So I think it it is hard though still to like mm -hmm. come up with something fresh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess because I mean Hereditary kind of like I don't I don't think that was like a new take on anything. That was like a I mean it kind of was, but it kind of wasn't. Yeah, anyway. it has you know a lot I mean? of it has a like we were kind of seeing the similarities mm -hmm. with other movies when we were, we were yeah, talking exactly. about it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So, so. I, I guess that's how it is. I mean, when it comes to like creating art in general, I feel like there's a, a lot of people will will they're get inspired by something or they might take a piece of something, you know what I mean? And, and, well, why do you think they're doing all these reboots? Right, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, like, you know, so it's it's horror I think is the hardest hardest genre. I feel like comedy can be hard too just because you know, it's, I guess finding specific because everybody has a different sense, of, you know, level of sense of right. humor. You know what I mean? Like, right. so I feel like that's hard too. But I, I would say horror is probably the hardest genre. Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah. Um, I got this one that I'm working on, but then again, it's more psychological. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and I feel like psychological horror too is like 
I feel like that's not explored enough. I mean, there's of course there was there's a certain era of like slasher films, you right. know, like Friday the Thirteenth and and all Freddy. that kind of stuff. Yeah, Freddy and Michael. They're making another Halloween, which is like yo. Hey, I'm, kinda, I'm actually pretty stoked. For yeah, it looks uh, it looks good. It well, looks especially good, especially with John Carpenter upon yeah. it and Jamie Lee Curtis in it. Right. right? Yeah, I haven't I mean, heard back in it. Yeah, it definitely it, it looks good. But good. I was I, when I first saw that the when I just saw that there was a Halloween trailer, I was like really. But then I saw the trailer, I was like all right, this it might be okay. You know yeah. I mean? So I'm I'm gunning for it, but. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely it, it's, it's just hard to come up with the specific specific stuff. Um, what? Well, okay. So what? So your net besides your next, what kind of horror films have I guess inspired, or that you've looked at? I was like, man, I really love this horror film. Um, one of my favorite franchises of all time is Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, uh, I'm a big Freddy fan. I mean, I even had him mm -hmm. when I drove to Texas, 18 and a half hours from yeah. Fort Wayne to oh, Austin. Woo. I had my I had my little Freddy figure, and I oh, literally yeah. just oh, yeah, yeah. I I taped him up to my dash just yeah. to have that company. Like, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> like that's my little dude right here. You know, this will be hot. This is my little dude. <laughs> right <here. laughs> But that's but, what's up. But yeah, I mean, I guess other than Nightmare on Elm Street, I mean, I love. Man, there's so many. Yeah, there's a whole lot. There's so many, man. And lot. I mean, we can go on for days. I know uh, films. Austin's. His, he loves Don't Breathe. I know yeah, Don't he Breathe does, I mean, is like his favorite. He's huge in the Evil Dead. Like, yeah, that's, yeah that's Evil that's Dead and yeah, Don't Breathe. Def, def, I think for me, my favorite horror film of all time... Uh, I don't know. I, I would say I like I like the Conjuring movies a lot. The Conjuring movies are um, good. I feel like they're about to get played out, though. I mean, did, did you see the trailer for The Nun? Yeah. It's like Annabelle. Like, <laughs> yeah, why? No, Annabelle, yeah. Like, it's about to start getting played out for money reasons. It's cash grabs. Man. Yeah. That's all it is. That's basically. I, I would say, not my favorite, but the one horror film that scared the absolute shit out of me was Salem's Lot. You ever heard of that movie? I've heard of it. I don't think very, I've Very, very old movie. My brother used to show it to me when, when I was younger, <laughs> and that used to scare the absolute shit out of me. It was like some vampire weird movie, but it was that was a scary movie. But Dude, dude there's a lot of good there's a horror, whole lot. man. Yeah, there's a lot of good there's horror films. And good there's movie. a lot of different ideas still to explore. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, I would say my biggest inspiration of anything horror right now has kind of been more like video game stuff. Like Resident Evil 7 nice. has been amazing. Uh, this movie, uh, this game called Outlast, you ever heard of that game? I think so. The, literally, if you ever, if you get a chance to play it, buy the first one and the, se and the second Dude, one, the, like, insane. Like, like, I mean, I, I, have, I don't I own a console, I haven't owned a console in yeah. forever, but man, like, there's times where I'm like, man. I would yeah. love to get that console just to play that horror Exactly. Game. You know what I'm saying? Because exactly. I would love to experience Especially with the VR shit. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I played Resident Evil 7 in VR. That shit was oh, dude. never again. It was, it was cool, but it was, it was scary. Dude, it was I'd scary, be so bro. down to experience that. Yeah, it's man. something else, man. All right, so now let's talk more about, like, life in Texas. Like, you know, living in Austin, Texas now. Yeah. Like, what was, what, was, what was the decision to, to make you actually move specifically to Austin, Texas? Of course, if people don't know, uh, Austin, Texas is a pretty, like, um, big spot in the film community right now mm -hmm. you know in america so like music capital of the world too. yeah music capital of the world of course with south by southwest and stuff out there like what what was the decision for you to actually move there because i remember when when back when you had told me that you were first moving there were some other different ideas you had in mind like indianapolis and stuff like that like what what was what was it about austin that made you move there um well a couple of years prior to moving um two years in a row mm -hmm. i was flown out by my buddy who actually lived lived in fort wayne who's actually He's a musician. Mm -hmm. He ended up moving to Austin. And so once he got a band out there, mm -hmm. he ended up uh, hitting me up. <sighs> Burping. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ended up uh, actually hit me up and was like, hey, we need a music video done. He's like, I'll pay for your plane ticket. Come down here and shoot a music video for yeah. us. I was like, done. Yeah. You know, I stayed with him. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. two years in a row I did that, you mm -hmm. know, separate occasions. And um, I just fell in love with it. Like yeah. I was just like, man, the vibe down there is so great. Yeah. Like there's so much to do. Like yeah. the weather is amazing. The food is God, oh, unbelievable. Man, amazing, man. And like, so it was just like, man, like I really loved it. Yeah. And so then when it came down to it, mm -hmm. um, and I was like, all right, I got to do something with. It. I got to move. I, you know, mm -hmm. after breaking with my last girlfriend and everything, mm -hmm. uh, moved back in with my mom for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I was like, all right, what do I? What do I got to do now? Right. Like, and then Austin was always on my in my head. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, I don't know. So maybe I can try indie, you know. I mm -hmm. had a buddy that we were I was gonna move with, we checked out some spots and mm -hmm. then it just came down to it where things were just didn't seem didn't feel right. Right. About yeah. moving there. Mm -hmm. And I was like thinking like, Man, if I move down to indie, I'll probably be doing the exact same shit that I'm doing here in Fort Wayne. Right. And yeah. be miserable all over again. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, you know what? Screw it. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna freaking move to Austin. Screw it. Move far, like, yeah. you know, far away. I mean, yeah. yeah like this cha whole change, the whole change of scenery and everything. And so mm -hmm. then, 
scheduled one, you know, I got with my, my roommate now, who's the vocalist for my buddy's band. Mm -hmm. um, and he was looking for spots. He, we communicated through that and found a really cool spot. I was like, sweet. I was like, I'm, you know, I'll, move, I'll come down this day. Mm -hmm. Ended up packing up my van, sold a lot of my stuff, packed up my van. With with all my shit, right? Yeah, and drove, drove. eighteen and a half hours. You drove that by yourself? By myself, dude. Well, How? I, had little, I had little Freddie on the dash. Yeah, little <laughs> Freddie on the dash. <laughs> Freddie on the dash. <laughs> Freddie on the dash helped him out. I, I mean, how how did you like stay awake for that whole? Did you like stop anywhere at all, or you just went straight through? Dude, it was uh, a lot of energy drinks. Um, <laughs> yeah, coffee, energy and drinks, just anything like and like, music, music for sure. Yeah. I listened to a lot of Childish Gambino on the way down. Oh yeah, that definitely because of the internet actually. Yeah, that album oh, especially. Amazing, amazing album, yeah. Um, but then I ended up, uh, I think, uh, actually when I got, I mean, there's a couple times I stopped for gas and mm -hmm. had to get food and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But, like, actually stopped. It was like I got into Dallas. Yeah. All the way to Dallas, almost nonstop, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, it came down to where, where I started falling asleep on the road. I woke Whoa. up and I was, like, heading for a guardrail. Oh, and I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta pull over. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta do something. And yeah. so I pulled over to Walmart. Oh, and I had slept in the car for a couple hours, yeah. woke up, rolled three hours into Austin, yeah. got Damn, there. Yeah. That's wild, man. Yeah, that, that, that's the crazy. See, drives like that, I, I don't know if I could do it by myself, man. I like the longest I've ever driven. I, I drove home from Florida when I when I after I graduated from college, but and that wasn't. I mean, that was that was like a 16, 17 hour drive. But I had a, the Enigma was with me. He he like drove part way. Um, but man, that's that's crazy. So okay, so like. Austin, Texas, like what, what's it, as far as like the film community compared to the film community here, which of course is a big difference, but like, what are the differences that you've noticed since, for, you know, the time being that you've lived there? Um, well, you know, everybody that we work with mm -hmm. and like how tight knit our group is. Right, yeah. Um, and then just like some of the pe people that I do know around here that are just very kind of closed minded and, all right, we got our own thing, we're not going to work with anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're our own thing. We're, we want to be better than them. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like that's that mentality that I, right, that I yeah. hate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And down there, everybody's so welcoming. Right. Like, yeah. like I worked on, I've acted in a couple things. Like, Chive TV is a big thing down there. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting a paid acting gig. That's dope. Just to do this like funny little video yeah. for six hours. Yeah. You know, and that's then I had a buddy of mine, who, you know, who working with great crews, great mm -hmm. equipment. Mm -hmm. and uh, had me as, you know, assistant camera on it. Mm -hmm. And then there was a couple other films that I acted in, and it was just like, it's just very welcoming. Yeah. That's it's like, sound. okay, you're like, oh, you're a filmmaker too? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, let me see your, oh, man, that's great. Hey, mm -hmm. I'd love to have you a part of my set. Like, right, yeah. it's, it's that, you mm -hmm. know? And then they're the same way. Like, hey, I'll help you with that set. And it reminded mm -hmm. me a lot of what we had starting out. Right, exactly, the, yeah. This family that we got going mm -hmm. here. That's what's so, up. I mean, like... I mean, like, have you built up a pretty uh, good network, you think, back in, down in Austin and everything? Yeah, I'm um, working at the Alamo Draft House, which is, mm -hmm. um, and especially the location I'm at, which is kind of like the OG location there. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of the biggest uh, movie theaters in the country, mm -hmm. you know, it's a full service restaurant and bar, I'm a server there, mm -hmm. and like a lot of people that I work with are artists, you yeah. know, a lot of filmmakers too. Oh yeah. And it's just, sure. just like, it's just easily, easy to network mm -hmm. down there, and it's easy to just fit in and just kind of go with the flow of everything and right. just make friends like everyone's just very welcoming dude. that's what's up definitely like, awesome i mean like as far as like um as far as like i guess the opportunities and of course you haven't been in austin how long have you been living in austin texas so far since october so what about eight months eight months so almost a year close to it I mean, it's definitely gonna be a year soon because it's yeah, flying by it's right flying, now dude. i mean as far as like with the amount of time that you've been there of course it, the, your time in Austin, Texas, and time in Fort Wayne is a completely different span of time. But right. like, do you have you? What, would you say that the opportunities in Austin have been a lot larger or bigger than you than you think? Probably than Hands here. Down. Yeah. Hands down. Like, um, mm -hmm. like we're still trying to build something here. We're still trying to even get the outreach to a lot of people. Like, hey, there is a film community, yeah. and like a lot of people, a lot of people are just so stubborn to realize that, mm -hmm. and just very close-minded. Yeah. You know, and that's what sucks, is because like, I, and it sucks when I, I come here and I see a lot of these local businesses fail, fail, out of business, mm -hmm. out of business, all these bands breaking up, you know, right, all these, yeah. all, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I go down there, like, 
I, there's, I haven't been, like, I'm, like, uh, there's, like, barely any fast food around there. Right. <laughs> like, it's all these local restaurants yeah. that are just flourishing. Right, these local exactly. businesses that are just flourishing. My dude that I work with, mm -hmm. man, he's, like, my age. Yeah. And he runs his own, like, vintage clothing shop. Yeah, that's dope. That's like, dope as hell. I mean, like, it's just, it's just. The support is definitely The different. support is there, man. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what sucks, because it's like, man, it could be that here, but everyone mm -hmm. is just so close-minded and right. stubborn, and it just, it's Exactly. And that's, that was a perfect segue into my next question. What would you what would you think of like what do you think of the community of filmmakers like in in Fort Wayne specifically? What what do you think of like the community of it? Because for me, how I've always talked about it when it comes to support and stuff, I feel like there like Fort Wayne is a pretty artsy artsy city. It's, it's getting it's getting to become that. There's it's, a, like, yeah, it's it's on its way. Yeah, art is recognized here a lot more than it has been in the past mm -hmm. like decades. You know what I mean? Especially like in the music scene. You know, with the Addison Egan girl going to the Voice and right. Christiana going to the Voice and everything. So it's like. It's getting it's it's getting more known on the on the on the music side I would say the most but like as far as filmmakers here I feel like the community of Fort Wayne doesn't support it 100% yet because they feel like they haven't seen it like fully yet mm -hmm. um, but, what, but what do you think of like I guess the community and support uh, that that Fort Wayne and the community has for I don't know like honestly like I mean because everyone that we work with is from everywhere in yeah Indiana. that's true yeah you know I think the only you know, I guess, I mean, not not with myself anymore, but mm -hmm. the only other filmmaker in Fort Wayne that we work with regularly is Ryan, right. you know? Right. Um, everyone else is Indy, Kokomo, I'm Warsaw, in, I'm in Angola, Angola. Yeah, so I, like, it's just, it's, yeah. it's just all over the place. Fort yeah. Wayne specifically, I don't know, like, there's just, uh, like, I don't know, a lot of people are very... It just comes back to being closed-minded, man. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just I just wish that people would really give it a chance mm -hmm. and see that art. And, like, and it's funny, and this and this is this is hilarious to me, mm -hmm. that I come back, <laughs> and I remember I was talking to Bryce when mm -hmm. I hung out with Bryce and did a photo shoot for him. Yeah. I was like, <coughs> I was like, dude, I, I asked him, I was like, man, do people still, like, yell out their cars and shit when, we're, when people are filming? Right. And then literally, <laughs> like, five minutes after that, someone yelled something yeah. as they were driving by. I was like, okay, that answers my question. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, and he's like, do they not do that in Austin? I was like, dude, it's like a regular thing in Austin. Right. They see someone filming or taking photos, like yeah. they just think it's a regular day thing. Right, and that's and nobody, yeah. no, nobody messes with that. Right, exactly. And see, that's it's, it's interesting too, because like where everybody's at, like seeing where, I, I guess film, uh, like like where everybody else is at, and seeing what their kind of community or supports like, mm -hmm. like for like you said, Austin has that support and everything. In Angola, like Angola has no clue anything about filmmaking <laughs> at all, like. There's only I, there's only production companies in town is is mine which I'm still not the most known in Angola and then there's another guy who I've worked with before and and like he kind of has like some of the same struggles too as far as like trying to get um, especially in a smaller town right too. a small town like that and plus there's there's no market really for that right and that and that's a big thing too I mean I like I feel like since Fort Wayne is the second biggest city in Indiana there should be a market you know what I'm saying no, I agree uh, especially with all the different stuff that's going on here in Fort Wayne downtown and just some of the different uh, some of the different scenery that's that's here, like the, it should be here, but like you know, Angola didn't have nothing. I don't know much about if Kokomo. I think Kokomo has like a little bit of a at least with Austin. And I mean, Adam they got their they got the Hoosier Dance Film Festival, which mm -hmm. they do, which I, I mean, it's still I mean, it isn't huge, right? Yeah, cause I think Kokomo is a pretty small place, right? Kokomo is pretty small. Yeah, um, but like I don't know. I just feel like. It's very hard to for people to accept mm -hmm. art because they just feel they. I think a lot of people see it as oh, it's somebody's hobby. Right. Yeah. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? It's, it's somebody's 100%. hobby. Somebody's filming something. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You know. Some people can't don't look and, at it as it could be an actual career. But then it like and then it just upsets me that mm -hmm. all these people that don't have any support once they see like Addison, who's amazing, mm -hmm. you know, and I love Morrison, um, mm -hmm. but they see her go on The Voice and be successful with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all of a sudden everyone's jumping on the bandwagon. Okay, I want to support her. Why well, yeah. didn't you support her before? Right. Yeah. Why? Exactly. Why? Why? Why, why exactly. is it all of a sudden now she's on TV? Then I want to be with the band. I want to yeah. be friends with them. I want to. I want to know them. Like yeah. why? Exactly. And that's and, how. And, and, and like, wild, it, it just makes no sense to yeah. me. It's like why can't you support from the very beginning? Why mm -hmm. is it okay since it's at that level? They they think now that a lot of people think now that. Um, since, oh, it's on TV, they're on The Voice, this big show, mm -hmm. they're being successful now. Right. And um, I should support that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's like... You, you know, know, it's crazy, you man. Support them from the beginning. Right, exactly. I mean, like, exactly. Like, like, look at like a person like a Drake, a J. Cole, a Kendrick. Like, like 
when they started pop, I mean that ha that happens really a lot with anything. But like when they started popping, like like of course they, a lot of people will love like Drake and J Cole now, you know what I mean. But then if they see their friend who's trying to bubble up and do something like that, and they mm -hmm. don't want to support until they actually until they somewhat prove something to them, or, or until something has popped off for them, and that that happens a lot, unfortunately. Um, you know what I mean. And and I think right now, especially too, there's a, I think there there's the thing about what it is like in, in people in our position like there's there's a lot of different formulas to I guess like breaking out of that barrier you know yeah I mean? like I've, I've seen I pay attention to a lot of the different local like rappers and stuff because I'm, I'm friends with a lot of local rappers and stuff around here mm -hmm. and like I see that there's certain formulas that some of these rappers or certain musicians are doing to try to make that same exact step as like an Addison Egan or a Christiana and stuff and it's like you know it's not a bad step to make but it's like it it it, it seems it seems a little gimmicky in in a way. You know what I mean? As well, far as they, a little they think that a lot of people think, okay, well if that worked, that has to be it no, has to work yeah. for me then. Right. It's instead like, of instead of doing your own thing yeah, and actually exactly. trying on your own. You know what I mean? And and, and, and it's different for the different like kind of different arts that you do. Like for for uh, for uh, music, of course, the voice is a, is a is a great platform. You know. Right. Uh, for filmmaking, I mean, I guess the best one of the best platforms now would be a lot of these, of course, online platforms like a like a Netflix or like a. Amazon Prime or Hulu, you know, stuff like YouTube, whatever. A like, good thing, like, um, speaking of that, have you mm -hmm. ever uh, watched Rebel Without a Crew, Robert mm -hmm. Rodriguez? Show? Oh, yeah, 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 I've heard of it. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, like, that was all shot in Austin. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really? where Robert Rodriguez yeah. is from. And so, like, he literally just got five filmmakers, gave him mm -hmm. $7,000 in 14 days to shoot a feature film, yeah. and it would premiere at uh, South by. Yeah. That's wild. Like, I mean, that's, that's, that, right, that alone right there mm -hmm. is, like, great exposure, that alone right there. Mm -hmm. Gets you to that next step because it shows you, you know, you know, it shows that you're doing something. Right, exactly. And like, and uh, I do agree with the Netflix. I do agree, you know, Netflix can be great. I do agree, YouTube is mm -hmm. a great platform as well. Yeah, even um, though YouTube kind of YouTube be screwing up sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I like Vimeo. More. Yeah, well, as far as like the platforms that you've put a lot of your films on, like, where have you put them? You put them more on YouTube, Vimeo. I I do both. Um, mm -hmm. I'll throw a lot of uh, I'll throw a lot of my music videos on YouTube. Um, I'll throw I mean I have films on YouTube as well, but like for that higher quality, I'll also throw it on Vimeo. Yeah, because well. I think Vimeo Vimeo to me feels like a more professional. Yeah, and more I professional and I use and I use like platform. especially for the web my website mm -hmm. like I'll use the Vimeo links right yeah. to get that higher quality exactly. for each thing. Exactly. I mean so. Vimeo and Vimeo they've changed up a lot of their policies. I mentioned this. Um, I, don't, I don't know if the Blake, I, I interviewed Blake too. I don't know if his interview will be out at this time, but Vimeo had this new policy, which I thought was kind of interesting, um, where it's like, it's like more like on like copyright strikes and stuff yeah. like that. And their policy is like, say you put out three videos and it has three, you know, some kind of copyright material on there. Mm -hmm. you, if you get three copyright strikes, uh, like your account will get shut down <clears throat> until you until you actually show proof that you can use that copyrighted material. So say you use a song from Drake or a song from uh, Kendrick, whatever, and it's copyright strikes each time. Like you have to prove that you can use that, and I feel like that would be I feel like that's a little extreme for Vimeo because Vimeo used to never be like that, like right. at all. Like YouTube was mainly on the copyright copyright strikes and stuff like that. So I feel like that's an extreme thing to do, but of course they're probably losing out on money, you know, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, on the business it's probably, side. It's probably it's a, probably also like a lawsuit. Thing, yeah, a know? huge lawsuit thing as far as people using all this copyrighted material. And uh, for me, because like I kind of split <clears throat> some of the different things I put on YouTube and Vimeo. Like I put more of like um, music videos and and sometimes do different documentaries and stuff on on Vimeo or on YouTube. Then on Vimeo, I put like my the stuff I've done for commercials and like reels and stuff mm -hmm. and like films. I put it more on Vimeo. Right. Uh, just more more bigger productions. I say I put on Vimeo. Right. So, um, yeah, it, I think that's just some, some, a little extreme, but you know, business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, do you when as a filmmaker, do you pay a lot of attention to like film business and stuff, like kind of the stuff that's going on in the industry and everything? Do you pay attention to that kind of stuff? Uh, a little bit. Um, not too much. Mm -hmm. Not too much on that side of things. Yeah. Um, just more like on the creative side, nothing too much on like on the, that. Kind I mean, of I guess I do when it comes <coughs> to business, is because I've you know pretty much produced every film that right, we've, you yeah. know that we've done, mm -hmm. and like it's just like it's it, it's definitely nice to know the business. But that, then again, I think a lot of that also stems from me being a musician and booking mm -hmm. my own gigs and yeah. marketing that. Mm -hmm. Same, I, I brought that that those skills into filmmaking. Yeah, and really tried to. Mm -hmm. 
really tried to bring that into it to make because it, it works. I mean, you have the mar your mar you know how to market, then you can bring those skills right over to a different uh, medium. You know right, what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, sure. it's definitely. The business side is there, and you can kind of see what works, what doesn't work, you know. And mm -hmm. it's kind of, a lot of it's trial and error as well. Yeah, you know? for sure. I mean, because I, I think with SW Films, like what I've been doing, like you know, since because you know I don't have anybody like uh, like an extra person to to helm a lot of other stuff, which I am looking to, for a business partner eventually. But <laughs> uh, definitely, I've been like having to handle a lot of the business side too, especially like dealing with like you know like uh, actual companies and stuff for commercials. You know, you, you know, because like the first commercial I ever did. Well, not the first one, but the, the first, I guess, the biggest one I did in Angola, like, I had to really go through trial and error, you know, and, right. under, and understand, like, how how it is to work with an actual business who, who writes writes off checks and, and yeah. stuff like that. So it's like, it's important to learn, especially especially in places like Angola, because they've never they've never dealt with, you mm -hmm. know, video uh, production before. Yeah, so, and a good thing to do also as well is just get contracts for all yeah. your, all your Oh, time. yeah, definitely. I've, I've started making contracts and setting, setting stuff out now because... People will try to play you, you know what I mean? That's, oh, yeah. that's, that's, people, people can be shy, Steve. Yeah, like. so it's like, nah, it's like, you know, that's not going to happen. I'm going to make sure I get all, all my ducks in, in line, you right. know what I mean? <laughs> um, all right, so um, close to the last question. Uh, what directors have inspired you? I know you mentioned Adam Wingard um, mm -hmm. is one. What other directors have inspired uh, you? One that I, can pr that I pretty much consider God in my book is David Fincher. Mm, yeah. I mean, he, he's, he like... And that's and that's I guess the reason why I haven't even said any of his mm -hmm. films because all of his films are just like masterpieces to yeah. me. Um, I can literally say like all, like all of his films are like some of my favorite mm -hmm. films. What's your favorite out of his? Mmm, put me on the spot. <laughs> put me on the spot. Oh man, I'd say seven. Yeah. Seven. I'd say so. yeah. seven. Seven because that was also the big influence for the realist. Right. Which yeah. was like the big the first big production that um, undefined mm -hmm. Fritzl and set of cards though. Right, yeah. So it was just kind of like that big, and the psychological element, the right, crime, exactly. and like, mm -hmm. I love Seven, you know, but I love Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yeah, like, I love Girl. I love Gone Girl. I, I mean, love, like Fight Club, all everything, man. Like it's yeah. just yeah. Once I think about it, yeah, Dave Fincher was high up on that it, list too. There's for me. so many Social Network. Like, oh yeah, shit. That might be that might be yeah, my favorite. Dude, for me. Like, it's, <laughs> that was such a good so movie. many good movies yeah. of his. That's why I can't pick one. Um, yeah. Other than that, like, I love like I love Christopher Nolan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's he's probably my favorite right now. I mean, of course Hitchcock. <laughs> yeah, you had to go with old school on it. Mm -hmm. um, Stanley Kubrick. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. Kubrick for sure. Dude, there's so many good ones, man. Yeah, there's a lot. There's so many. Good Give me ones. your top five, dude. And not not like top five, five but like five, five, five of my favorites. Five of your favorites, yeah. Ah, <laughs> in no order. In no order. Okay, yeah. David Fincher. David Fincher's one. He, mm -hmm. I'll say he is number one for me. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? Uh, Adam Wingard. Um, what, uh, what is he did? Did he do? Yeah, he did. Um, Death Note too, right? Yeah, he did Death, yeah, he did Note, Death Note, which got so much hate. I, know, I liked it. I thought I thought there were some elements that were a little weird if you've ever watched the anime before. Like, but, but, but that, and that was a good movie. I like, it's a, and that's the thing that I had a problem with a lot of people with a lot of people's things about. It. It's like, oh, it's it's not like the animal. The anime right. is a freaking cartoon, <laughs> right? Like, it's, and, and it's, it's hard to like, match that same kind like, of vibe. Like, you know what like, I, mean? I thought it was good. I thought it was great, and I saw a lot of Adam Wingard in that film. Yeah, you know exactly. Um, and he did the guess. He did. Mm -hmm. uh, Blair Witch, yeah. like, and he's got he's doing the Kong versus Godzilla, dude. Yeah, no, I oh, I'm excited <laughs> for that. When I heard that, I was like, damn, man, that's that's that that made me happy. Just being a full sale alumni and loving Godzilla, I'm like, man, that I, man, I wish I could get on that set. That'd be a, a dope ass set to get on. Yeah. Okay, Adam Wingard, David Fincher, who else? Um, Christopher <clears throat> Nolan. Um, God, that's so tough, man. Put me in a spot. Got two more left. <laughs> I'd say Tarantino, but I feel like everybody says Tarantino. Yeah, I mean he is he is uh, he's a goat. He's one of the greatest. Yeah, he is great. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited for his his little thing with the with the uh, Manson family stories. I'm excited for that. That's gonna be good. That's gonna that, be interesting. That, that should be pretty good. Interesting. Um, sure. Honestly, I don't know, man. I can't think of it. I one more. I don't know. You said we'll we'll put Tarantino in there. What one more? <laughs> I guess I'd have to probably Kubrick. Okay. Kubrick because I'd be in there. Just because I love, dude, like The Shining and, like, man, come on. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 sure. it's really hard to really. But then again, like, I've learned, like, so many different things from so many different directors. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to really pinpoint. Right, the exact, like, 
who's the one. You yeah. Know what I mean, for sure. For me, I, yeah, I, I say, know, what do you got? Tarantino, for sure, just because I really, like, it's funny, like, I never really used to care for some of his older films at first until I, like, really, until I really decided that I was going to go to film school and mm -hmm. I started rewatching like, like, Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Before Dogs. Before you say anything, I'd probably say San Francisco is kind of up there. Oh, uh, yeah? But I'm He's just up. really basing that off of mm -hmm. his work in Blue Valentine. Right, yeah. For sure. Okay, so he's yeah, he is dope. I think Blue Valentine's probably the only film I've Place seen. Place Beyond the movie. Pines. Who's is that? Was Ryan Gosling in that? Ryan Gosling, Bradley yeah, Cooper, Ada yeah, okay, yeah. Mendes. That yeah. was a good movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've seen that in Blue Valentine from him. Um, for me, Tarantino, Christopher Nolan for sure. Mm. Um, shit, this gets hard now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. Put it um, on the spot. <clears throat> damn. <laughs> Fuck. Um. Mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. Oh, Ryan Coogler. I, I think Ryan. He's only he's only done a couple films, but Ryan Coogler directed uh, Black Panther. Um, um, uh, damn, how, how am I forgetting the? Uh, how am I forgetting the name of the film? Of course, Creed, but the other one, Fruit Valley Station. Fruit, yeah, Fruit um, Valley Station was great. Yeah, Ryan Coogler is amazing, especially just being a black director and how young he is yeah, and stuff. Dude. I definitely look up to him. Uh, I'm not gonna say Spike Lee. I'll put him in like a. I'll put him in like a. And an honorable mention. Did you see that new movie he's coming out on? Uh, Black Klansman. Yeah, that looks good. That looks so that good. Looks, and, and didn't it, 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 was it on uh, Sundance that it won something? It won some kind of award recently. Either, either, it was either at Sundance or Cannes, I think that he won something. Yeah. I think. Something like that. But that, that does look good. I didn't really care for his last movie he had. I think that was something shy racket. That was, that was <laughs> not even, that was a bad movie. But, um, <laughs> damn, that's hard, man. Christopher Nolan, Tarantino, Ryan Coogler. I got two more. Um, I'm not gonna say he's my favorite. Okay, what do you think? But uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not even gonna put him in this list. But I have to mention. Have you ever heard of a director named Lars von Trier? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, La the reason why I like him is because he's so out there. He is so out there, and a lot of his what? No, going out. I'll, 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 I'll tell you after. I, a lot of his movies, a lot of his movies have this weird shock value to them, and like I've kind of taken to that. I, I kind of I feel like a lot of the <clears throat> scripts that I've been writing. I want to put some kind of shock value into them, mm -hmm. but not just for the sake of just just to shock people. Mainly for like a reason. I feel like some of his movies he just does that just to get a rise out right. of some people. But Antichrist, have you seen the Antichrist with uh, Willem Dafoe? And I forget the one lady's name. I've probably seen bits and pieces. Of yeah, it's a it's very it's a it's a very sad and depressing yeah. movie, but uh, it's a good movie. And then Nymphomaniac is a have you, have you heard or seen Nymphomaniac? I've heard of Nymphomaniac. <laughs> that yeah. movie is that movie's crazy and messed up, but. Lars von Trier is an interesting guy. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna say he's my favorite, but I'll put him in there. But I'm forgetting the one guy. I'm putting. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take San Francisco out of mine. Yeah. And throw in Aronofsky. Okay, that was what. That was an honorable mention for me too, because just because I loved Mother Black Swan. Of course, it's, it's amazing. The wrestler's so good. Yeah, like um, I feel like yeah. he's one of those guys that that puts a lot of his personal experience. Oh, definitely. Emotions, yeah, definitely. Uh, into that. I mean, Mother. It's mother all is that. Like, yeah, Mother's <laughs> crazy, and I want to know. He, I don't want to. I want to know what he was thinking of when he wrote that script, like. Because he, he said that was on was, fire, he was on fire or something when he was Yeah, they were saying like he was like pissed off at the world and then that's the product of Mother. Right? Yeah, like, like <laughs> wild. But um, how am I forgetting his name? Um, he's doing? probably my favorite director, Blade Runner 2049. What's oh, his name? you're talking about... Um, <sighs> What's his name? What's his name? Villeneuve. What's his name? Denis Villeneuve. Mm -hmm. That is my favorite director right now. Yeah, Villeneuve. He yeah. is amazing. Villeneuve is really freaking Enemy. Good. Uh, Prisoners, Blade Runner 2049, uh, Arrival, like Dude. literally he has knocked it out of the park every Sicario. single time. Sicario. Dude. Every single time. He's real, yeah. He's yeah, my yeah, favorite yeah. director. Dude, yeah, Villeneuve is definitely he's, up there. He's, he's a killer, man. Yeah. Like, literally, my favorite that he's done was probably Enemy. Have you ever heard of that movie or seen it? Dude, I own it. You, I oh, yeah. Love Amazing. Enemy, that, movie, <laughs> that movie is one of those psychological, like, holy yeah, shit. I love Jake. I love Jake, dude. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal kills that role. The ending, you remember the ending of that movie? Oh, is, yeah. is, is, is crazy. Like, I, yeah, Denis Villeneuve is my favorite. So, I said Tarantino, Nolan, uh, Ryan Coogler, Villeneuve, and I'll throw in Von Trier in there. Even though he, oh, wait. Yeah, I'll throw in Von Trier. <laughs> um, or actually, I'm going to switch out Von Trier for a guy named Hiro Mirai. You ever heard of that guy? What has he done? 
Well, he hasn't really done any movies, but he's directed a lot of Childish Gambino's actual like um, music videos. He like directed This Is America, but nice. he also directed all. He directed not all of the episodes for Atlanta, but majority of the episodes for okay. his TV show. Atlanta. Nice. And he is. A, if you've ever watched some, of course, you know Donald Glover's like music videos and all that stuff. And why, have you ever watched Atlanta before? Dude, I I, I need to find a way to watch it. Bro, like, it's I on Hulu. I don't know if you have Hulu. At I don't. All. <laughs> That's what yeah. sucks. I'm gonna have to get at least the three month trial. Yeah, I've been, so I've been wanting to watch Atlanta it. is amazing. My I've favorite TV to show it. in a long time and I, I don't really watch a lot of tv shows but um definitely i have to say hero Murai, he he's a very calculated director and he's very smart on his visuals and stuff so i'm gonna have to say hero Murai, put him in there nice um, all right so uh for the last question um now basically where do you where do you plan on taking your work um with static Heart production the different films that you're going to be writing and all that kind of stuff um and everything like what is like the last um or not the last. What is like the next, the next thing for you that you have planned within the next? Oh well, yeah. What is the next thing that you have going on? But what, where do you kind of, I guess, see certain things happening for you in the next five years? Of course, living in Austin and you know networking and stuff and having more opportunities. I would say, um, well, the next pri the, the next movie to come out from Static Heart is going to be from here, mm -hmm. um, which we premiered the trailer for for the end of the moment premiere. Um, that's gonna be the next film that we got coming out. Adam, Adam and the boys. Everyone's working on mm -hmm. the new film next month. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I won't be in town to mm -hmm. be on set for it, which bums me out yeah. completely. But um, I'll be helping producing, helping doing whatever I can. You know, in mm -hmm. Texas, probably help edit it. You know, yeah. all that good stuff. Um, but um, other than that, the next step, I guess, continually to keep writing, writing, try to get these scripts finished up. Uh -huh. And uh, eventually, I know, I know, with a little bit more time, man, I think it's going to be, it's going to get to that point to where it's going to be so easy uh -huh. for all of us to kind of travel. Right. Yeah, travel for sure. And film. Yeah, I definitely got to go down to you Austin, know, man. Dude, like I said, you got a place to stay, bro. Yeah, you gotta for sure. I, tell, I, tell, I think Austin's trying to come down for mm. a Fantastic Fest. Mm. And I told him, I was like, dude, I might be working it, but like, yeah. you can come down, man. You got a place to stay, whatever. Right, for sure. But yeah. um, for the next five years, man, um... I'm just going to keep networking. I'm going to keep, um, I guess, doing what I'm doing mm -hmm. and constantly become, you know, strive to be better. Mm -hmm. Just always strive to be better. Always, you know, work on different projects, try out different genres. Yeah. Keep working on that and keep bettering myself as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. That way, once we all get together again, we can just like go full force with right. it. You know, I'll have, we'll all have different experiences, new experiences. We'll be able to correlate that into the the next projects that we do because i'm going to constantly keep working with you dudes right oh you yeah. know like yeah, it's, it's, there's no there's no way that's going to stop mm -hmm. um oh, but yeah. yeah man so i'm just I'm just it's within the next five years i think i think uh and hopefully hopefully fort wayne can uh i guess get their heads out of their ass <laughs> yeah, and, and, and see the art and, and see the talent the that are in this exactly town. support the the community the, support the small community of filmmakers yeah. but um, definitely, like, try to build it up and, and shit. Try to try to fund fund us, man. We, you know what I mean? Yeah, Sometimes, get some funding, get some investors. Yeah, we need know. we need some money for some of these crazy ass yeah. ideas we have. So, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Help us out, man. Come on, Tom Hen <laughs> uh, Mayor Tom Henry. Is it Tom Henry? Is that Tom, Henry. I think Tom that, Henry. Is he still the mayor here? I think. I, think, so. I, think <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm sure he is. But Tom, <laughs> help us out, man. All right, cool. So, uh, got any social medias you want to plug? You know, can plug yeah. whatever you want. Plug it all. This is the platform to do it on. All right. If you want to check out, I'll make sure to put like. Sorry to cut you off, but I'll make sure to put like all the, uh, all the actual like your social media like, stuff like on the frame perfect, and everything perfect, and link perfect. it down. You know. Sweet. Yeah. It's like say if you want to see anything, music videos of the films that we've done so far, um, Static Heart Productions would be the best way to see all of that. Um, I guess the next step would probably be Facebook, facebookcom slash Static Heart Productions. Um, we also got. I got my Instagram, it's kind of my personal Instagram mixed in with the filmmaking thing, SHP underscore T Freddy. Um, and yeah, I think that's that pretty much sums it up. You can find yeah, find us on Facebook, everything, Instagram, all that good stuff. Boom. Boom. Bam. Boom bam. Boom. You got bam. any last lasting words, lasting uh, and inspirational quotes that you'd like to throw out there to the audience, any aspiring filmmakers that could be watching right now? Um, anything you want to throw out there? Um, don't give up. Don't um, ever think that you're better than anybody because everybody can always be better. Um, always strive to be better. Always um, 
always have that goal in mind. Don't settle. Um, I could say that right now. Don't settle. Just keep motivating yourself. Keep pushing and pushing and pushing harder and harder every time because that's what's going to get you to where you want to be. Don't give up because the more that you get discouraged, don't let anything discourage you because it is filmmaking. There's going to be problems. There's going to be things. I mean, we've had a private, like every set we've had, every production we've had, there's always been some kind of issue. But it doesn't discourage us. It just makes us want to do better. It makes us see different, see things a different way. And uh, yeah, just don't give up. That'd be the thing. If you have a dream, follow it because this is this is our lives you know this is what we're trying to do you know whatever makes you happy do what makes you happy everything else is just can fall to the backside you find your happiness and chase it absolutely that's a great message and one one last thing to end on too and I, and I think I've mentioned this before like in, in, in like some some maybe one of the different uh, uh, vlog episodes I've done but like definitely I appreciate you you know bringing me into the crew and stuff and everything because oh, yeah, you know, I remember I met you I think it was like April of last year or something like or yeah it was like right when animal and in the moment was wrapping up it was like that last um at the bar and so that was like the oh last, yeah so yeah, yeah it's probably like around that march yeah march around April. that time so like definitely i appreciate that because i i'm glad i got to network with all you guys yeah. have close friends you know lifelong friends and lifelong collaborators and stuff yeah. and uh I definitely appreciate that. So thank you yeah, once again, yeah, my guy. And you guys yeah. already know, you guys already know the deal to like, subscribe, notify, you know, hit the notification bell yeah. to get notified um, with all Stefan's vlog stuff. I'm going to mm -hmm. be linking my man's channel here. I'm yeah. going to be linking all the different stuff below, yeah. all the different social medias. So you guys already know what to do. YouTube, and, Vimeo, yeah, all that YouTube, stuff. YouTube, Vimeo, all of it. Be on it. Uh, be a part of it. Indulge on it. Consume. <laughs> um, but yeah, you guys already know. At SW Films, every vision made. Every, shit. Yeah. At SW Films, every vision is made with cinematic Maybe excellence. Like this, I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Later. That's Peace. Squad, bitch. All these bad bitches say they love me. I already know. Check the, check the